Welcome back. In this final part of our mini-series, we're going to have a look at bringing in a Genesis morph and turning it into something that we can shape the Genesis figure into. So in our case, we've used the Russian 3D scanner, R3DS wrap, to wrap Genesis around a body scan from 3DSK. But you could have also made a morph inside something like Blender or ZBrush of your dream character. For that, you would have exported Genesis at base resolution, chiseled and hammered away at her with whatever tools were necessary, and now you're ready to create a morph inside of DAS Studio so that you can make it operational with all things Genesis, like clothing and hair and poses and whatnot. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to go and load up my Genesis female dev load once again. You can also use the regular Genesis base figure for this. Just don't use a morphed character. Make sure it's a base character. What we're going to do now is import the OBJ that we've created earlier with something called Morph Loader. Let me show you where that is. That's under Edit, Object, Morph Loader Pro. And what this is going to do is load in an OBJ that describes deltas or differences of the current figure. It just tells DAS Studio basically, hey, all these vertices that I assume are still intact, move them to slightly different position. And that, that's what we call deltas. And that is in fact a morph. Morph target is another name that you may have heard from other applications. So we'll open that up and an ever so slightly scary window comes up. You can leave the top portion here on DAS Studio. That's essentially similar to the preset that we've had when we import and export OBJs. And then down here in this button, where it says choose more files, you can import, you can search for the file that we've saved out earlier from R3DS wrap. In my case, that was called Cassandra Morph. Let's open that up and you can leave everything else as it isn't just hit accept. If ever you needed to change something, assuming that you know what you're doing, you can click on this little disclosure triangle here and there's lots of other options that come in here. So for example, if you had a morphed character already and you're making a change in another program and you want to bring that back as a morph, then you would have to switch this here, reverse deformations to yes. We don't have to do that because our character was neither posed nor morphed. It was the straight base resolution Genesis figure when we took it out. And that is really all we need to do. Hit accept. And what you should see is this message here, which says loading morph Cassandra morph created morph successfully. If you see something else along the lines of, hey, this didn't work out user, then that is DAS Studio's way of saying, you know, the vertex count didn't match. You may have either had additional geometry in this morph that it is not expecting to import into this morph. A classic is you've exported the morph at high resolution rather than base resolution. That's not going to work because on export, that studio is going to write everything that was implied as geometry, and that's going to be a higher vertex count. Another classic is you've left the eyelashes on a base character and exported that without disabling or hiding the eyelashes. That's also going to change the vertex count, or you've had genitals applied. That'll also change the vertex count or you had a tail applied or you had other geometry in the scene like a necklace or a ring on a finger or clothing that's all going to change the vertex count and that's going to cause this issue thankfully i've thought of all of that and i didn't get the horror message i got the success message and everything is awesome i click ok and i will see my morph under the parameters tab under morphs under this here cassandra morph and watch what happens when i left click and drag this morph over i'll dial in whatever my body scan looked like isn't that exciting this is just so amazing just take a moment to rejoice here you can also drag the slider to the left which you know makes my character look like an alien and that's probably because that's really not what it was intended to, to do i can go and change that on this little gear icon on that slider click it under parameter settings and change the minimum to zero rather than the default of minus 100. And now I can only go and left click and drag the slider up to the zero value, which is the basic Genesis figure, and to the right to turn in my morph, to dial in my morph. Now, while this looks great, you may get issues when you start applying poses. So under power pose, you can probably already move the character and it is moves rather well. It's very cool. It's exciting how this, how easy this was. But if you apply 
pauses right now, you'll probably see that there's some issues here. Let me just show you what that is. Just under the basic pauses, let me go and do this, for example. That is not what we had bargained for. <laughs> that is uh, quite crazy. So something's gone wrong and I can tell you what it is. The skeleton is not in the right place because our figure is a little bit shorter than the base Genesis figure. Let me go and bring this back and switch over to my joint editor tool here, either with this little icon or you head over to tools, joint editor, control shift J. And this shows us the bones in our character. And we can see that they're not in line with the character right now. Thankfully, Das Studio, knowing about this morph, has this fantastic ability to make that happen almost automatically. All we need to do is switch over to this tool, Joint Editor tool, right click anywhere on our body or in our scene and hit Edit, Adjust Rigging to Shape. And that's going to adjust all these bones and put them into approximately the right place. A little dialog opens up that tells us, you know, a lot. We just hit Accept and watch the magic work. Seconds later, the skeleton is where it should be. And this is already pretty exciting. So this has now saved the pose issues for this particular position of the slider, which is at 100%. But watch what happens as we take the original slider now, the Cassandra Morph slider, left click and drag it over. We can see that the geometry moves, but the skeleton doesn't quite move with it. So that's going to be a problem if we wanted to use 50% of Cassandra or, you know, 30% of Cassandra. Something's always off and we need to have a way to tell Das Studio, hey, could you go and do this calculation for us and move the skeleton as we move the slider? And it, Das Studio also has an ability to do that. For that, we need to go and put this slider into edit mode just by right clicking on it hit edit mode and then these little icons come up at the top here at the front here and now you go and right click on that slider again and you see some additional menus pop up one of which at the bottom is erc freeze that i believe stands for enhanced remote control and it means that if we hit it another window comes up and we say okay fine it can now go that studio can now go ahead and calculate the differences as we move the slider so let me go and bring that back out of edit mode so right click again and disable edit mode these icons go away and now we can go drag our slider and we can see that the skeleton is moving with it and that is extremely cool so now we can use any position on this slider, any little bit of this morph and dial it in with other morphs. And now our poses will also work. Watch what happens. If I go and do this pose again, it's made for a man, so it doesn't quite match. But, you know, no more wonky arms and no more eyes popping out of the head and stuff. So that's that's pretty cool. So now we've successfully turned our body scan into a character morph inside Das Studio. We can do with it whatever we please. We can add poses, we can add clothing, everything's going to fit. We can mix and match it with other figures that are in our library and we can build scenes with it. So one of those things is that we can go and apply skin materials from our library to this character. Maybe also give us something to wear. Perhaps no, not, the, not the basic clothing. Maybe I have a nice bikini I can use. Maybe this one here, the Bandau Twist. Let's go and use that double click. It's working except for some poke through issues. That's okay. We can always go and fix that. And we can put a skin texture on it if we wanted to maybe give a Monique skin texture. There we go. That's nice. We can put hair on it. We can dial expressions and we can literally do anything and everything that we can do with regular Genesis figures. But we're doing it with a fully rigged body scan. I think that is just so super exciting. That was it for a little mini series about how to turn a full body scan of a real person and turn it into a fully rigged morph inside the Genesis figure in Das Studio. Isn't that amazing? I find that absolutely exciting, super exciting. That really takes your art to the next level. This is so custom, you can't even buy that on the store. It's crazy. Such body scans can be obtained on a site like 3DSK. And in fact, if you're up for that, there's a discount code in the description of this video. Take a look and see what they have on offer. There's also a 30-day trial version of the Russian 3D scanner software called R3DS Wrap. There's also a link to that in the description of this video. Other than that, get yourself a free copy of Das Studio and noodle around with it. It is so much fun. We're doing monthly live streams in which I'm showing you how you can use this software and take your art to the next level. Thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions, then don't hesitate to ask them in the comments. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.